When we think about knights, we usually have noble men in mind, heroic warriors whose gallantry was unsurpassed. We've all heard the tales of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, which include the dauntless and dashing Sir Lancelot and his spirited son Sir Galahad. But Arthurian legend is just that, legend, and knights in real life bore no resemblance to these romantic depictions. We might look at the oath the Knights of the Round Table took, which was all about chivalry, not being greedy, not taking land by power, not being cruel or murderous, to always be merciful and, of course, always do your best to protect women, sometimes referred to as damsels. It all sounds good on paper, but it hardly mirrored reality. Welcome to this episode of the Infographic Show, how medieval knights were not noble but cold-hearted killers. First of all, what is a knight? A knight was basically someone who was a skilled warrior and someone who was also highly skilled at fighting on horseback. The old English word for knight actually means something like servant or boy and knights throughout the Middle Ages might have been in the services of the country, a rich noble person or the church. The Crusades, for instance, they were basically military men, but over time developed codes of conduct, or what we call chivalry. For their service, they received land. All they had to do was pledge an allegiance to the king or an overlord. An overlord might have a number of knights in his service, the more the merrier if you wanted to take someone else's land. These knights, though, were not born to the peasant class. They were of noble birth and would, as kids or pages, learn from older knights how to fight and hunt. When they reached the age of 15, they became squires, and after that, if things went well, they could receive a knighthood. That usually happened as it does in the movies, with a sword being tapped on the shoulders and the new knight swearing his allegiance. Things like jousting tournaments actually took place, as did round table meetings. They also had a code of conduct, and they were supposed to embrace charity, faith, strength, loyalty, moderation, and justice. So far, this all sounds rather like the Knights of the Round Table, but this is the Middle Ages we're talking about, a time when life was brutal for most people. One example of brutality is that these knights were often given the right to pillage. Yep, they were allowed to ride into some small village and take what they wanted. This was not good for their peasants or craftsmen that lived in those villages, as they could not defend themselves. As Steven Pinker points out in his book on the history of violence, the better angels of our nature, the knights would often be busy ransacking villages and any resistance was met with obscene violence. This was not about being noble, but taking what you wanted because you could. They saw themselves as superior to the peasant class. It was their right to take what they wanted. As Pinker says though, this proved to be very problematic. The reason was because the commoners that worked on the land, called serfs, were owned by the landholder. That meant that when they were killed or hurt or stolen from, the landholder lost out too. In turn, that landholder would plan an attack on someone else's serfs. The only real losers, of course, were the poor. In an interview with Scientific American, Pinker says, Statistics aside, accounts of daily life Life in medieval and early modern Europe reveal a society soaked in blood and gore. Medieval knights, whom today we would call warlords, fought their numerous private wars with a single strategy, kill as many of the opposing knight's peasants as possible. Being a knight wasn't always about protecting the land and being a noble warrior, but being a strong force that was high enough in the hierarchy that you could get away with murder. As one person put it, medieval knights indulged in relentless, brutal acts of savagery. You can see this in picture form in a book called The Medieval Housebook, which is a series of illustrations from the 15th century. As one encyclopedia tells us, the Middle Ages were tough times. It says, in competition for sometimes scarce economic resources, land, crops, livestock, and peasants, neighboring estates frequently resorted to the sword. So yes, you needed a good stock of knights, aka hired killers. We often see knights as leading the charge in battles, mostly overseas affairs at the orders of the king. Except according to some sources, in the late Middle Ages about 80% of knights didn't even bother fighting. They let regular soldiers go to war instead. All they had to do to get out of military service was pay what was called a skewage. This was also sometimes called shield money. And if the king could collect enough cash from the knights, feudal troops could be bought and sent to war. These knights were not conscientious objectors. Rather, they they just didn't want to fight. The great knights got out of military service and were replaced by poor folk. 
Still, at times, the king did tell landowners that it was time to buckle up, get some armor on, find a good warhorse, and go to battle. Some knights that did go to war in other countries wanted very much to be properly compensated, especially when they had been forced to go. Despite chivalry codes, it's well known that after battles they would plunder entire towns of everything worth anything. This was their bounty, and rightfully theirs after victory. We are also told that as well as taking the bounty, the knights would often slaughter the peasants of the defeated town. That was seen as fair game. After all, the losers were heretics. Some critics also tell us that these knights who may have seen humanity at its worst probably suffered from what we call post-traumatic stress disorder. The knights could be extremely violent, as there was no justice system at the time that properly functioned. People often took the law into their own hands when they believed their honor had been lost. So for a knight that had experienced carnage, it's perhaps not surprising that some were capable of inflicting their own kind of extreme violence. One historian talking to speak Online talks about the knight called Sir John Arundel. According to the historian, Sir John's gang of knights entered a convent to shield themselves from bad weather. They decided to violate the nuns in there and steal some riches. They then took the nuns on their ship, but decided to throw them overboard after they had made use of their bodies. This was during the age of chivalry. It's not something we see in Hollywood. As the book Chivalry in Medieval England points out, knights were capable of terrible atrocities, but we've created the fallacy of the brave and noble knight because it suits us to think that the powerful were fair and noble. That book tells us that there were three things that knights fought for, and those were land, gold, and war booty. This is certainly not how we've portrayed knights throughout history. We seem to have mystified the past, which might be dangerous considering how we might have to learn from history. While knights may have had this code of conduct that's said to be good to women and don't kill the meek, much of the code was about obedience to those above you, to the king, to the religion, to the country. That's the code of soldiers today. But it doesn't mean all soldiers are immaculate regarding their ethics. Although one writer is less critical when talking about these people, writing, although many knights failed to live up to the ideals of the chivalric code, many others did. Like the image of the cowboy in the American Old West, that of the chivalric knight, while often exaggerated, continues to provide a standard of conduct to which many aspire. Do you agree with that? Do you think romanticizing the past is dangerous? What can you tell us about knights? Tell us in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other show, Why Living in the Dark Ages Sucked. Thanks for watching, and as always, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.